I saw somebody else on their video make a comment on a DeWalt saw. <laughs> it was kind of funny. Uh, to me it was. Um, if you want a saw that's going to give you a good cut and cut straight and all this stuff, you know, get a DeWalt. Um, this is a brand new blade. Not brand new now, but it was when I put it on because I knew that I needed nice clean cuts. And whether that's porcelain or natural stone or whatever, you always want a new blade when it gets down to about, eh, I don't know, about an eighth of an inch or so. That's when you want to replace the blade. You won't get the good cuts. And then some people push it past there, which is why they get jagged cuts. So the fact that, that it's a DeWalt absolutely has nothing to do with a good cut. It's the blade that gives you the good cut. Anyway, uh, so again, this is my friend's saw, and there are there are a couple of things, again, that I, I love about DeWalt. One of the things that I, I did not like is this plastic tray. Yes, it is a very tough, sturdy plastic tray, but I could see a day where it develops a crack. And with the type of tray that I've always had, which is cast aluminum, never an issue about the tray is gonna give out ever, ever, ever. So that's one of the things that kind of kept me from buying a DeWalt. Um, amongst some other things I, that I couldn't take the table off. With mine, I could physically take the table off and do a back cut, which was very important to me to be able to remove the table. Many saws nowadays, uh, your table is attached to the rail, either both sides or one. You can never remove the table. DeWalt has a little function over here where you just pull this on the spring mechanism and you can remove the table. And so that became, I guess, a non-issue with me in addition to the fact that you can do plunge cuts. So if you wanted to, you just turn this knob here and you, and you literally, just like a table saw, can just bring the saw down as far as you want So and bring it up as well. So if I want to do a plunge cut, I set my tile up under it and then I just pull down on the handle until, you know, I want the plunge or until I want the cut made, rather. Um, and then I turn it if I have to from the next line. And there's enough room on the back of it where removing the table is not an issue to me anymore because now I can do the same thing with my other saw that I can do with this, is I can, I can take my tile if I need to do a back cut, I can turn it upside down and I have enough room. Taking the table off was a big deal to me because I can't get enough room, but there is enough room in here. And, this table goes way back, so you can do a 24-inch tile, a 24-inch tile and still has some room left over uh, to push it through, as well as diagonal. So the diagonal thing, too, is a big deal that I can set a full 24-inch diagonal tile on here and not have anything coming off of the table um, is absolutely wonderful to me. So I like that. Uh, another thing I like is that these, these little hoses here actually shoot the water out. And if you need the hoses for whatever reason closer to the blade, then you can do that, or you can push them up and then have a little dial over here that you can actually set where you want those hoses to go. So there's a lot of great little functions. I don't have to deal with a toggle switch anymore. I have this. This took some while to get any used to. I'm gonna turn this on. It's gonna be so noisy. Really, it's not so much the saw, it is the motor. Um, so the motor is very, very old. When I get my new one out, I'm hoping that that noise will be cut down. And then also, it's not belt driven. So again, with regard to my other saw, I had to replace the belts and it was a real pain in the butt to try and do that with the, the belt guard and all that stuff. Things had to come off. It, it would take me, you know, typically 10, 15 minutes to change a belt. This is, this is direct drive. There's no motor, or there's no belt, rather. Uh, so I don't have to worry about that anymore. And the, the, almost the best thing about this saw has this little slot right here, sorry, has this little slot right here, which is literally for, if I can turn this back, 45 cuts. So, if I want to do a 45 cut, I literally just put it right on here, and here's my guide, here's a little notch out for the 45, and I just run my saw right across the tile, and I get a nice clean 45 cut without the attachment that I have to attach to my table with the other one. So that is absolutely wonderful. The, the fact that it, it 45s, and the fact that it plunge cuts, and the fact that I can put a 24 inch tile on here, those three things alone are enough to make me really, really like this saw. Um, there's, again, what I referred to earlier, if there's a way, 
DeWalt and anybody that's listening to this, if you could integrate some type of light, an LED or something like that, into up underneath or something like that that shines on the blade so that when you have low lighting you can actually see where you're cutting, that would preclude me from having to put on my own light, my own little halogen light um, with a little clamp on type of thing. Um, another thing I like about it is that it is a little more portable than my saw. It's a little lighter. Some would disagree with me. It weighs something like 67 pounds or whatever, but um, this, this whole contraption right here that's attached to the motor and everything is one part, and then the tray is the second part, and then you have the stand, which is the third part. Um, this contraption here is a lot lighter than my previous saw, so I do appreciate that as well. One of the things that DeWalt also integrated into their saw is the same thing that happened with mine is that they decided they would put holes in here. I don't think that it comes with casters. I guess I'll find out when I open my box. Um, but you can go to Home Depot and buy some casters and put these on the legs of your, tr of, your um, of your stand so that you don't have to dump your water because typically if I wanted to move my saw you know, even if it was three or four or five feet, I would have to dump my water first. There's no way I would ever take a risk of trying to lift, even with two people, the water and the stand and all that material and all that stuff um, by hand. So the fact that it comes on rollers or that you can actually buy rollers retroactively is a wonderful thing. A couple other things I really like about this saw. It has a little brush, a little brush guard, if you will, I guess. This one's kind of worn down a bit. Um, but this little brush guard Obviously, you can see that it, it catches a lot of material, but more so to the point is that it catches the water. So as you're running your tile through, it's both catching material and water so that it's not getting thrown out the back end. And then, in regard to the back end, look at this. Look how they just wrapped around this whole splash guard. Like, there's a part in the middle here with this, this splash guard thing, and that's not enough because usually you get spray out coming from the left or the right. So they took care of that and they, they, they wrapped around the splash guard to the left and the right, which is actually a absolutely wonderful thing. Now, having said that, it still shoots out water, as you can see. You know, water still shoots out. This is an older type of saw, and I imagine my saw will be a lot easier to deal with with the splash guard. I think this has been screwed back in. Um, so, I really like that, but sometimes it catches, sometimes it catches on the tile, especially if I've got the tile up high like that, it does catch and it's a little frustrating to have that so, so stiff, but on the other hand, you know, without it, you're spraying water everywhere, so that's actually a very, very good idea. And here's a, another thing that I really like about this saw. With my saw, because it was belt driven, the belt was over here, uh, over the years, with all of the saws that I've had of my model Husqvarna, um, the little clamp mechanism that stops the belt from driving so that you can actually get the nut off to change the blade, that little clamp mechanism stopped working. It, it just gets stripped out and there's no way to fix it. So I literally have to take the cover off of where the belt's at and actually hold, clamp down, hold something in order to ever get this nut off. And that's very frustrating, plus I don't have any clearance. So, so, yeah, I can pull up my cover a little bit and get some clearance, but I guess my frustration is in changing the blade. Sometimes it'll take me in excess of 10 minutes to change a blade on my old saw. This saw has a clamp mechanism built into the side here. If you push this button, that actually stops the blade, and I don't assume that will ever give out. It's a little different configuration than the one I have. So, you know, it's got, the blade is not going anywhere. Once you push that button, the blade stops. Now, it's just a matter of taking off this screw. Once you take off this screw, which you can see there's an Allen wrench, you take off this screw, and this screw if you wanted to, I suppose, but that's enough. This part actually goes upward, which opens up where the nut's at, and then you can get some channel locks on here and, and change out your blade. I know it's a small thing, if you're watching this, you're like, oh yeah, whatever, whatever. To me, it's a big deal. All these things combined are a big deal. So, I'm going to back away a little bit of, of what I said about the best tile saw out there. Um, I'm going to give this one, not this one, this is a friend's, but I'm going to give my new one a shot for, I don't know, you know, four to six months or whatever, and I'm eventually going to come back with my uh, full-fledged review on the quality and the design of all the things that they incorporated into this and, and just overall how it's functioned to me as opposed to the other one that I have with the Husqvarna. So 
Uh, so far, so good. I like this. I've been working with it about a week and a half, two weeks. And, you know, even with the raggedy one that I have, it's, it's, it's doing a good job and I appreciate it. And I can't wait to get my other brand new one out of the box. All right, as I told you already, and you've already seen on the previous video, uh, this saw in action. And so I just got it, I'm gonna do a little un unboxing. I'm not gonna make it too complicated. Um, I don't know how much of this stuff is put together, so I may not be able to do a demo, but if I, and I don't even know if it comes with a blade, it may not. And so I may not be able to do a demo, which is why you just saw the demo previously on my friend saw, so you kind of see how it works. Um, and a lot of people like the unboxing thing, which I don't really get, uh, but I will, I will go through that as quickly as possible. Um, this saw comes as you see it when it got UPS um, with the stand being separate in the separate box, wherever that's at right now, I don't know. And it's a bit banged up, but obviously it's well protected, which is always good. in the table. And, yay, it comes with a blade. I don't know if I have time to set all that up. I'm not sure I like this blade either. It's got the little notch ups. Um, the contiguous blades that are solid, that don't have these little bends, are much better blades in my opinion. First of all, they have more teeth on it. They have more depth than this does. Also, a lot of the tile I work with is very, very dense porcelain. And when you're trying to run that through and move the tile over just slightly, this steel is actually weaker than the tile. So you end up with a crooked cut um, with something that's not contiguous and this isn't. So I'll, I'll, I'll probably end up tossing this thing and then just buying one from Home Depot that I'm used to. But it's, it's nice that they gave me a blade and instructions, which, you know, I'll promptly throw away because real men don't need instruction books. And uh, an Allen wrench. So, after everything is said and done and all the boxes are out of the way, this is what we have. So yes, there is some setup. Um, and the setup is gonna be probably fairly easy because there's not a lot of parts to this and I won't bore you with that setup but you see they uh, took care of everything to make sure that the rail is protected Got a water pump oh no that's it what is that is that an external off and on switch no did they gave me an external one that would be nice Maybe that's the reset reset button. And here is, okay, so on my other saw, let me explain something real fast. On my table on the other saw, which has a, whoops, which has a rubber table like this, there's little notch outs, and those notch outs are there for two reasons. One, because it allows the water to run off the table so you're not inundated with water. But the other reason is because they're exact 45s. They go this way on that side and they go this way on that side. So one of the other critiques that I had with this one when I was working with it is that you can't really cheat and, and put your tile on there on a diagonal to get your 45 cut because there's nowhere to cheat from. You can't see. So inevitably you would need some type of fence or some type of contraption to get your 45, which this comes with and my friends didn't or he's lost it or whatever. And it's still a minor complaint. I, there's, I, I wish that they 
had put those little notch outs on the table like my other saw so I could do a little cheating once in a while and I wouldn't have to revert to go grab this and stick it on the end of the table. But you know, it's a minor thing. I just thought I'd mention it. And there's another one. Wow, very cool. Um, the external parts sometimes aren't convenient. As much as they are uh, to guide and make your cuts easier, uh, I have a lot of tools, which a lot of tilers do, and they kind of get lost in the mix. So unless I have it handy in a bucket or something like that, I usually end up not using them anyway, which is why I like that cheating method a lot better. Wow, so the power, all the power cords and all that stuff has to be, yeah, I won't be doing, I won't be doing any cuts. I won't be demoing uh, this saw today. Uh, this thing is very basic, put together. In other words, <laughs> it's like Christmas time and I have no kid to put it together for me. Uh, so this is going to take some time. Um, I will be using this on my next job, which will be a few weeks from now. Um, and I will be showing it at that point um, and integrating that into the video that I'm doing for that job. But um, I just want to do kind of a quick unboxing to kind of give you an idea of what to expect when you get yours. Yeah, the rail system is not set up on this. This is separate from the rail already. All this stuff has to be set up from the get-go, um, which is okay. I just expected it to kind of be put together already, and it's not. But again, what I said on my previous uh, little snippet there you saw there, um, this whole thing, kit and caboodle, along with the stand, which I don't know where it's at right now. And so, again, the stand, uh, the tray, the saw, all the, the stuff that you see, including the blade and all that stuff, is $849. So for a lot of you DIYers, that, again, I reiterate, that probably seems expensive, but this, this saw is a workhorse, and this saw will last me many, 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 many years, as opposed to, um, oh, there's a stand. This, uh, this saw will last me many, many years. Oh, by the way, they also have holes at the bottom of these legs, as I already mentioned before, that you can go to Home Depot and put casters on there so you don't have to dump all your water every time you move it, which was a big problem years ago. Um, but anyway, so that's, that's about it. That's my, uh, my wrap-up on, on my new DeWalt. I'm very excited to get a chance to use it. Broke. So I guess when I put all this together, I will figure it all out and show a video of that later on. And so that's it. That's all of that I can say on my unboxing later.